so uh, my name is Christian Hernandez. I am a head of community over at Acuity. And my talk is going to be about managing application dependencies using Argo CD. And so um, this is a topic that comes up a lot. Um, I think it, it's probably like one of the most commonly asked questions. So uh, this is based on a, on a blog I did not too long ago. And this is kind of like an updated version of that blog. So um, where I want to start is um, kind of like a fundamental kind of like baseline. Um, I know there's a lot of, in the morning, they asked like what is, um, uh, you know, who, who's his first time at Argo, ArgoCon, like a bunch of hands raised up. So I don't want to make any assumptions, but um, so I kind of want to give a background of about why we have the Argo CD application CRD and why do we have that object. And it's basically because Kubernetes consists of objects, right? So, um, you know, objects like pods, um, deployments, services, right? And they're all really kind of loosely coupled, meaning they're, they're independent. You can deploy them independently and you kind of can update them independently. Um, and you kind of loosely couple them together with labels and you, you build relationships between objects with labels. And, um, and so that's really kind of like the foundational kind of um, idea behind the Argo CD application. So the Argo CD application is basically, from, from, a, from a very, very fundamental way, is a way to deploy related Kubernetes objects, right? So like if you want to have a life cycle, um, if you want to have um, all these objects have, its, have the same life cycle, right? Let's say you're using like microservices or um, you're, you know, you have a, a, you know, different objects that make up your application, you want to be able to not only deploy them, but manage the life cycle of those objects, right? And so, which basically makes um, the application CRD the atomic unit of deployment for Argo CD, right? It's kind of like the, the deployable kind of unit and kind of like the, the very um, the fundamental primitive of, of Argo, right? And so, what's um, the, by default, the Argo CD application, so like if you just install Argo, just kind of, you know, um, Helm install like without any options or you do the kubectl apply of the um, Argo CD manifests, um, by default that installation will deploy these manifests as is, right, as is, as it finds it in your, um, in your Git repo. So for instance here I have um, this, this repo URL, the target revision, the, the path, where my manifest lives, right? My Kubernetes manifest lives, right? So the way it finds it in under deploy overlays default is the way it gets deployed. And so um, that's kind of, and it deploys it to that destination. And that's kind of like the default. There's really, um, there's really no other further configurations other than that, right? So, um, so the need came uh, to be where um, people needed to deploy these Kubernetes resources, these individual resources, in a certain order, right? And so um, uh, a lot of people don't know this, but there's a built-in order of deployment uh, for the Argo CD application CRD. Um, it's, you can search actually in the code, um, in the, the, uh, in the source code you can go see. I think it's based on customize, if I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken, but there's like a default order in which it deploys things in. Um, and those are just kind of just based on Kubernetes, right? So Kubernetes, you know, it, it knows if you deploy a namespace, it'll try to deploy that namespace first, um, and then it'll try to uh, deploy the pods or the deployments and then the service, like in a certain order, right? It, it, it has a default um, deployment, right? Um, but sync waves, sync waves were introduced to further customize those, and it's, those are typically needed uh, for CRDs or resources that are unknown to Argo CD. So Argo CD kind of by default kind of knows about the Kubernetes resources, like the built-in ones, um, but it doesn't know kind of like CRDs that maybe you create, right? Like so maybe you create an, op um, an operator for your environment, maybe um, you install a third-party, you know, operator or controller from, you know, uh, some, some vendor and Argo CD doesn't really necessarily know about that and you need to order them here. So here is a, um, a very stupid example because um, this is the default, but I think it illustrates <laughs> um, it illustrates this really well. That um, in this case, I annotate this resource with a sync wave of one uh, to denote that I want this um, to be deployed first, 
and then the pod has a sink wave of two. So this is number based, right? And the lower the number, negatives included, um, are deployed before higher numbers, right? So here you can kind of um, organize the deployment of resources if you need them, right? So um, some things that you need to take to note is that sync waves only are scoped to the specific application that you're deploying, right? So if I go back here, so this specific Argo CD application, all the resources there, the sync waves are only scoped from within that application. Um, so that's, that's just one. There's no way of saying, well, like, wait for the resource in another application. It, it, it's only scoped to that. Um, something else I wanted to bring up um, beyond the scope of this talk is there's such a thing as sync phases, right? There's a pre-sync uh, sync phase and a, and a post-sync, and sync waves are scoped to those individual uh, phases. So um, I can explain that. Um, catch me after the talk. Um, so the, the question is, okay, like if I have resources in one application that depend on resources being deployed in another application, um, this is very common with microservices, like I said before, like you have kind of independent applications, but you may need, but, um, but there are certain resources that depend on, on each other, right? Like what, what can I do, right? And so uh, that's the point of this talk. Right, so cross application dependencies. How do you handle the deployment of application that has dependency on other applications? And from working with, with you know, the community, working with clients, um, working with customers, uh, there's really three main patterns that, um, that are available to you if you want to have application dependencies, right? So the first, um, we're gonna go over three for, in this talk. Um, the first one is eventual consistency. Um, the second one is the app of apps pattern. And the third one is relatively new, um, especially if you're new to Argo CD, this is a relatively new, it's called progressive syncs is, is a, another way to do that, right? And so, but before I go through all of these, there's actually some best practices, kind of prerequisites that I think a lot of people miss. Um, and they're not only best practices, like generic best practices, but they're also prerequisites, right? So none of these are gonna work for you. None, none of these three are gonna work for you if you don't do these things first. So um, I just kinda wanna throw that out there is that like these next couple of slides, don't skip these um, because you will have a bad time. So, so some important considerations, right? I think the big three considerations that you need to take into place are first you set up probes. So um, even, I don't know how long we've been doing Kubernetes, 10 years, but whatever, whatever it is, even still to this day, people don't set up proper probes uh, for their um, uh, for their deployments, right? So, and these are these are very very important because Argo CD relies on Kubernetes for the health status of your deployments, right? And so, um, a real dumb example, but I'll give it anyways. Like if you have a deployment that deploys a MySQL uh, database, but with no readiness or liveness probe, um, I've seen it happen. Um, Argo CD will just assume it's healthy as soon as you apply the manifest. So as soon as you apply the deployment but have no readiness or liveness probe, Argo CD assumes that it's healthy. And I don't know about you, but I don't think a database has ever been ready that fast um, <laughs> when you deploy it. And so you start getting errors. We're like, why, you know, why is my application not, you know, not working? The database is, you know, why is Argo marking this as, as up? It's like, well, do you have readiness and liveness probe? Um, this is just, the, the, the probe thing is just a generic best practice with the Kubernetes. So if you're not doing it, uh, please do that. And also it will help with your Argo CD deployments. Um, and the next one is important because it's uh, the application resource health checks, right? So Argo CD has the ability or has built in health checks for specific CRDs, right? So um, for example, um, if a lot of people are using Crossplane, it has built in health checks for like Crossplane and things like that. Um, but it doesn't know about everything, right? New things come out all the time. You have, you know, we're, we wait for PRs for those health checks, so you may have to add those health checks for unknown CRDs, extend existing ones. Um, those, are, those are very, very important. And on top of that, um, you need to enable Argo CD application resource health check for the Argo CD CRD itself. So a lot of people are surprised to find out that it's not enabled by default. So the resource check that, um, that checks the health of the Argo CD application, so Argo CD checking its own things, is disabled by default. Um, there's an issue there. 
3781. Um, I disagree with the reasoning, but we are here, and it is what it is. So um, I, I mentioned that like, your first choice is eventual consistency, right? And so um, really, it's just, you just wait, wait out the errors is, is essentially the, the first way to do it, right? And, um, and really, you can customize the retries, right? There's built-in retries for Argo CD, but there's a way to customize the retries. And there's this amazing annotation that you can do for your resource here called uh, skip dry run on missing resource. So um, you need this because Argo CD by default does a dry run of applying the manifest. And if that fails, it, it, it'll never succeed. So you need that annotation. Um, a lot of people are a little skeptical about using this, but because it's like, well, I want to do the dry run eventually. Uh, but what's cool about this annotation is the dry run is performed once the resource is there. So it, it, it has really no downside because um, it only will skip dry run if the resource isn't there. But once it's there, it'll from then on out, it'll do the, uh, do the dry run. I used to use validate equals false. Um, there's some edge cases where this is useful. I no longer use it. It's no longer needed. I think um, with the retries and the skip dry run on missing resources, it, it, it does like 99% of what I needed to do. Um, I don't think, there's, there are a few edge cases, but I don't think I ran into ones personally, I've heard of them, where validate equals false is, is, is needed. But I wanted to call it out just in case. Um, that basically does a kubectl apply um, validate equals false, right? It'll, it won't validate the YAML, it'll just apply it as is. Um, and again, eventual consistency only works um, if you did all those prerequisites. The probes, and, um, you know, all of that, like you, you basically want to set yourself up for success. So um, eventual consistency is probably my favorite one to use. Um, I, think, I think Michael also, Crenshaw also really likes, um, <laughs> really likes this, um, really likes this method being, yeah, and Carlos as well from AWS. Um, because it, you're just being more cloud native, right? And if, if you're not, if conventional consistency isn't working for you, there might be a problem in your process. So, but with that being said, um, there are cases where you want to use something called the app of app patterns. So the app of app patterns, I think a lot of people are familiar with these. So um, with, with this, so I'm, I'm going to go with relatively quick because I'm actually running out of time. Um, <laughs> A, so the app of app patterns, it was originally conceived as a method to bootstrap Argo CD, right? So you can imagine you have, in, in a very busy system, you can have hundreds of Argo CD YAMLs, application YAMLs, hundreds of those, and like, how do I deploy all of those um, with one shot, right? And really, the idea is just have an Argo CD application that deploys other Argo CD applications, right? Argo CD application is just a CRD, so it's just treated like any other Kubernetes resource. And so, um, so that was kind of the method of bootstrapping, but then you get all these convenient things that just exist in the Argo CD application, like sync waves, right? So, um, so the idea is that if you do it, if you do things in sync waves inside your app of apps, you can have the first app deployed, and then it'll wait until it's healthy, and then it'll deploy the second one, and then it'll deploy, and so on and so on, in whatever order you. Um, uh, you specify in your sync waves. So um, this is kind of a way where you can get a dependency management, right? So you can say, you know, deploy one first and then deploy second, second, and then the second one will wait until the first one is healthy. So, um, but that, with the application being healthy, um, again, the application health check is crucial for that. So remember, to set up your probes, remember to set up the application um, health checks because app of apps just won't work without, without it. You, you won't get the results you think you need. So I think I have a demo, but, I, but it broke. But I, luckily enough, I, um, uh, I have a video. So this is kind of how it, how it looks, right? So when I I'm going to deploy a database here. This database um, is an application. It'll go into like a progressing sync phase. Um, once this is up and running, because I have all my probes and everything set up, it'll spin up the, the backend application that connects to the database. Um, once that is up and running, um, you know, I have the health checks, all of that set up, it will then deploy that front end um, application, right? So as you can see here, it, um, I set up the sync waves to where 
my database goes first, and then the back-end application, and then the front-end application spins up there, so. Application sets, right? So I have um, application sets from like stepping back and just from a fundamental standpoint, application sets is meant to be an application factory, meaning that it's just a templating engine that is meant to deploy applications, multiple applications using a single manifest, right? And it does that using generators, right? Again, this is um, beyond the scope of this talk, but application sets have different generators that you can generate applications based on key value pairs, based on uh, configuration files in your Git repo, and there's just like a slew of them that you can do. Um, I think, I wanna say starting maybe almost eight months ago, six months ago, I think maybe uh, Michael Crenshaw keep me, keep me honest here, but um, uh, someone added progressive syncs to the, application, um, the, uh, to the application set, meaning that in the application set, now you can set up a strategy to deploy um, applications in a certain order. So here, if you can see in the YAML here, um, it's, uh, I try to get a smaller example, but um, it, it's hard. So I have uh, three, uh, three elements, right? I have the database back end and front end, kind of like the other example. And here I'm using a rolling sync to where um, anything that matches database, roll that out first. Then it goes into the second one, roll out anything matching back end. And then finally the front end, and this is all based on labels. So um, the application set controller will, um, will look for these labels and deploy your applications accordingly. Things to keep in mind, this is still technically an alpha feature. I think there's like maybe one or two dangling issues to actually make it into to a beta. I think a lot of people are, are using it. I think a lot of people are just using it in production. It's actually been stable for, for a little while. Again, there's maybe one or two dangling issues, but it is alpha technically, so just kind of buyer beware. Uh, so it needs to specifically be enabled since it's an alpha feature. So you have to actually go into the configuration file and enable it. And one thing that kind of trips people up a lot is that auto-sync is disabled. So even knowing your application set specification, template specification, if you set auto-sync to on, the application set will ignore it. It disables all um, auto-sync because now you're just relying on the application set controller to do the ordering for you. So how does it look like? So here, um, as you can see, it creates all applications at once, but it has auto-sync disabled, so there's like a, a difference there. But the rest is kind of the same. It'll deploy the database. Um, once that's up and running, it'll deploy the back end. Um, as you can see, that's synced. And then once that's synced, the front end starts syncing. So uh, as you can see, kind of the differences where the app of apps creates um, one app at a time. The application set will create all apps at the same time, but then disable auto sync, and then it'll then go in and, and sync all the um, of the uh, applications in the order that you specified in that list. So in this specific order here that I, um, that I, that I showed here in the YAML. So, summary, because um, I kind of blasted through that to try to get, all, get through all the um, information here. So summary is, so just think about Argo CD applications, so the application CRD as a collection of related Kubernetes resources. Um, you need to, just as a best practice, need to enable uh, liveness and readiness checks for you know, your deployments, your stateful sets, uh, your, um, uh, what was the, the other thing? Um, I wanna say daemon set, yeah, daemon set as well. Just kind of like the probes that you need there. Um, application health checks are important. I think this is something that a lot of people uh, forget when they're, when they're setting up um, app of apps or uh, progressive syncs is that um, your, uh, everyone has, you know, kind of internal CRDs that they're building, they're using third party things and there's just things that Argo CD doesn't necessarily know about at the time and so you may have to add those. Um, if you find one that isn't in, in Argo CD, I always encourage people to submit a PR uh, to add those health checks. Um, also, uh, you may want to extend them, maybe the built-in ones maybe isn't working for you so you may have to extend them as well. Um, if you're using app of apps with progressive syncs, um, you need to um, make sure the application resource health check, so Argo CD's actual application CRD health check is there. Um, and then this, this feature request has been out for a while. It's still open. I do believe that 
I want to say, uh, I don't want to quote uh, um, Michael Crenshaw here. So like for 80% of the time, this works for most people, right? And I think, um, and I think in general, I think app of apps and progressive syncs, um, eventual uh, consistency is probably good enough for like what we need to do. Um, but there is a feature request, uh, 7437, that asks for a depends on feature. So for those that um, are familiar with Flux, Flux has a, has a similar um, spec where you can do what depends on and kind of have a list of applications. Um, this feature is still there. I, re I encourage all of you to follow it and submit your comments, read it, read it like there's like discussions going on there. Um, I do think that introduces a, an interesting kind of uh, thought process when it comes to application ordering because the depends on kind of opens up the door for kind of like a DAG kind of workflow where you have, um, you know, uh, you know, you know, it starts with the application A, and then you have B and C that depends on A, but D depends on B and C. Like you can have kind of like a a DAG workflow there, um, and I think that opens up an interesting uh, an interesting door there for uh, for us. So, that being said, I to thank you and open up to any questions that you may have. Yeah, yeah, the mics are there if you want to go up. Testing, Mike. Maybe the AV guy. Yeah. Wait, we just need this mic. Yeah, there's another mic here if you want to. Oh, it was. Web. No. <laughs> I guess you could. Oh, there it's we go. It's working now. Excellent. Um, so you mentioned like a DAG like workflow. Have you talked at all with the backstage folks about either like consuming their metadata or the other way around? Data uh, with respect to like health checks going on? Uh, no, with like dependencies and ordering. Uh, no, no, um, I, don't, I don't think um, I've seen anything in the issue tracking for there. Okay. Um, I think since it's just Kubernetes uh, resources, um, it, it would just depend on, um, no pun intended, it'll depend, <laughs> it'll depend on like the health checks that are, uh, that are built in to like backstage and things like that, so. Okay, thanks. Hi, good afternoon. Hi. So uh, I remember you spoke about sync waves, and there is a specific order for um, Kubernetes objects to sync, right? For example, when we are introducing new CRDs and other objects too, uh, is there a reference guide that I could use to assign sync waves to it? So um, your question is like you're introducing a new CRD and you want to deploy that before the, the actual resource that. Yeah, so syncway, that's exactly what syncways are, are, are made for. Is, um, the, the idea is that um, you have to put like the order, like you have to be conscious about the order in, in which you apply them. Uh, so I, I was wondering if there is a reference guide, like for example, CRDs would be zero, and then uh, the other objects that we deploy would be one, two, and three, which I would know the relationships too. Yeah. But uh, is there a default recommendation on what goes first in the objects? Is there a reference you mean as in like a reference architecture or like an example? Yes. Yeah, um, there's, I don't think there's an official example. I think that um, there's examples out there that, that show you. Um, I think from a baseline view, um, you have, uh, from, from like our standpoint, it, it's like you do your own ordering however you feel like you do the ordering, right? I see, I, I personally like to use like powers of 10 or powers of hundreds, right? To give like, say, oh, hey, like, you know, my first, you know, the thing first is 10 and the thing that goes second is 20 or like 100 or whatever. It kind of gives you flexibility to like shove things in <laughs> like later on down the line. I think that uh, maybe that's uh, something I, I should add to uh, the presentation. My blog is like, I think that's a, a good practice to have like powers of 10 or powers of hundreds, depending on what you're deploying. 
Thank you. Uh, just as a small background to this is because uh, we did introduce a new application, and I assume that Kubernetes and Argo CD would deploy CRDs first, followed by the deployments and the pods, whatnot. But we ran into a loop issue, dependent, uh, like a circlic loop issue. So we had to give a minus one or a zero yeah. on the CRDs, which uh, I thought it would take care, but so I was wondering if there is any architectural reference where we could yeah. To, yeah, yeah, and I think the, also like if you're adding CRDs again, like like um, the uh, the health checks, right? Argo CD like custom health checks. Those like are things that um, you need to look at, especially if you're like adding your own, right? Like there's you know your application better than we do, and so you have to write that Lua script that like checks uh, the status field and your controller needs to bubble up the right status in order for you to check that status field. So there, it, there's, um, there's definitely a lot of work that you need to you know, put in, like you have to know your applications for sure. Thank you. Yep. Is there like a pattern or an example wherein uh, like you have a Helm chart which is deploying your application and you're, you're reusing that Helm chart for multiple uh -huh. And then if you want to create an application set with multiple applications in it, that's going to be another, some sort of a manifest or a template that you need to. Is there some magic around that which is available so you don't have to write can, everything from scratch? Can, can you explain that again? So you have a, a Helm chart, right? You're talking about a Helm chart? Yeah, deploying. let's say there's a Helm chart which is the definition of your uh, application, basically. Yeah. And you use the same Helm chart to do your back end, your front end, and maybe okay. a third service it depends on. So now if I want to do an application set, I want to have to define them for these sets of applications separately. Yeah. So is there like a standard pattern which is exposed that can be reused or tweaked? Yeah, so for um, the, the pattern would be progressive syncs, right? So if you're using application set with your Helm chart to deploy those Helm chart, you would, um, you would use progressive syncs at that point. Um, your only other option is to create a single application per um, okay. per, per Helm deployment, right? So okay. um, I, if you're using application set, I would enable progressive syncs and uh, read the documentation because progressive syncs are actually pretty flexible. They do more than just ordering. Um, so um, it, it sounds like progressive syncs is one thing that um, would help you in that situation. So, okay, thank you. All right, so I'm out of time. So catch me in the hallway track if you have any more questions.